welcome back to my channel. I'm Tina. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'm in Nova Scotia, Canada. And if you're wondering why all of a sudden I'm sharing so many more videos than I ever have, well, if you've been following me for years, you know I live out in the country where we have rural internet, which has been horrid. And ordinarily, it would take me hours upon hours upon hours to upload a video to YouTube. Usually it would take a couple of days. We now have a new internet provider and it's a game changer. Start to finish, it only takes me about an hour to upload a video. So this is a really uh, awesome, awesome, exciting time for me knowing that I can share as much and as often as I want to with you guys. So I am, I am seizing the opportunity and I am putting the camera on every time I'm stamping now pretty much. Um, so it's still morning, I've got my morning coffee on the go and I am looking forward to stamping some cards. I want to stamp some thank you cards for my customers as I do every month for those who place orders with me. And I also want to make some birthday cards and anniversary cards and promotion cards for members of my Serene Stampers community. So I'm really, really looking forward to uh, stamping and crafting and I hope you enjoyed today's cards and videos. So let's start stamping. So stamping on the fly again. I know I want to use um, the Countryside in paper. I completely stocked up on this uh, during the designer series paper sale last month. I love this paper. I think I ordered three of these. So I know I am going to design my cards around this paper. So that means the cardstock, the colors, and what have you. I'm gonna start by cutting my designer series paper because I'm mass producing. I'm making a lot of cards today. So I am just gonna go ahead and start cutting things. Uh, let's see. I think I'm just gonna grab a few patterns. Oh my gosh, this is just so pretty. Okay. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do one of each pattern, I think. So I'm gonna cut these down to measure four by five and a quarter. And my car bases are gonna be the standard size, which is uh, four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay, and obviously I'll save these for another card. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep cutting out my designer series papers. I'm gonna get a lot of cards out of this one pack of paper. Well, actually I'm not even using the whole pack, I'm only using half the pack, and I'm still gonna get a ton of cards. I have 36 panels here, so I need 36 card bases. I have chosen Misty Moonlight for my card base. So um, all I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, I'm not gonna show you all the cutting cause you can obviously, you know how to do that, but I'm going to be scoring at four and a quarter and cutting at five and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'm going to start gluing my panels onto all of these and I'll be right back. To cut my bases, I do have the old um, cutter that Stampin' Up! used to sell, especially when I make so many cards having um, a heavy duty type of cutter makes a difference. So this is what I use behind the scenes when I'm cutting so much cardstock. So I have all my card bases scored and cut. I have all my designer um, series paper layers cut. It is quarter after 10 and I started started this video at 10 o'clock. So, so far it has taken me 15 minutes to um, cut, cut all of this so far. So I will let you know at the end of the video how long it actually takes me to make all 36 cards. So in between like kind of the stuff that I, I feel is repetitive, I do speed up the video a little bit. Um, any situations in the video where I think, oh my gosh, I don't want you guys to miss, miss this, I will slow down. So I try to keep that in mind, but I also don't want my videos to go on and on and um, make your, your eyes roll in the back of your head. <laughs> so I want to keep it fun and interesting and not long and tedious. So on that note, I am just going to glue uh, a few 
of my um, layers and show you that and then um, I will move on to the next step. So one of the things um, that I get asked sometimes with new stampers is after you score your paper, is there a right way or a wrong way to fold it? Honestly, I don't think there's a whole lot of rules when it comes to stamping. So there's not really a right or wrong, but I will show you what I do. The, the score that is indented is typically what I use to fold on. So here, I don't know if the camera shows, hopefully it does, but here you can kind of see where the score is indented and here's where it's raised. The raised score is what I use inside my cards. But you know what? Uh, for years, I never really paid much attention to that. It's just a habit I've kind of gotten into, um, I don't know, at some point along the way. But there's no right or wrong. That is what I do, though. I'm not going to fold them all until after um, I have them all glued together. But I did just want to show you that. So I'm going to use my glue. You can use whatever adhesive you like if you're um, making these at home. And I love it when I get comments saying, I copied your card, I cased it. Good, that's what I want you to do. I want you to take the ideas and have some fun crafting at home. So that makes my heart happy. And uh, I love reading your comments when you guys tell me things like that. And I love the liquid glue because I am notorious for putting things on crooked. So it gives me that little bit of wiggle room to play around. So look at that. So there's, there's that done. I'll do one more and then um, power through these. And I may, well, I, I'm probably am going to uh, use some of the reverse sides as well because uh, both patterns in this paper pack um, the front and the back of this paper is so pretty. So I'm, I want to use them all and get a real good variety of cards. I've decided to use the Stamped with Love stamp set on today's cards, pretty much because I haven't really given this set um, a whole lot of love yet, and I need to give it with some love. So I'm going to stamp this image with a uh, I think I'm going to stamp it with, um, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to use stamp um, Misty Moonlight or Night of Navy. Uh, I will figure that out in a second. But I'm going to stamp them all and then cut them out. And this will be an easy image to fussy cut. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. And I'm just going to stamp it on basic white. I have decided to use Night of Navy. And it's photopolymer, so I'm going to put my um, foam mat underneath the paper as I stamp it. I'm going to grab my eye block. I think I'll get more on if I go that way. Gosh, I love that. I am cutting out my mailboxes now. I have exactly 36 mailboxes, which worked out great. All of my images are cut. And the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to... Um, I'm going to stamp this envelope image next. So I'm going to make 36 of those. Put my mat underneath. Also using my Knight of Navy. All right. So I'm just going to do the one sheet uh, first, show you what I'm going to be doing with these, and then I will go ahead and speed it up. So the first thing I'm going to do now that I have stamped these is I'm going to stamp my sentiments. And I'm making a variety of cards, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video. So um, I've pulled out Wildlife Wonder. I could do a note of thanks. Very best occasions. Happy birthday. You're the best ever. 
uh, sweet songbirds. You've got something to celebrate. So there's all kinds of great sentiments. Plus, even in this stamp set alone, you've got these, um, I like you, love you always. But uh, because these are specific birthday cards, cards for promotions, um, anniversary cards, I'm pulling in the other sets. So I'm going to use You've Got Something to Celebrate from the Sweet Songbirds. And that's going to be for my team members who promoted. You can tell I got little bits and pieces that I keep inside my sets. Don't judge me from how bad my sets are here. Uh, let's see. You've got something to celebrate. It's really fun to go through your stamp sets and see all the cute sentiments that look like handwriting uh, or printing that you can put on these little envelopes. I just love it. All right, so I'm going to just put this on a slant like that. I'm going to do a few of those. I mean, you could do it straight up and down. There's no right or wrong. I'll do a little bit of both. Sentiments are stamped. Now I'm going to bring in my white chalk marker. And I'm going to color in the pen. So I'm just doing the top, the bottom, and the middle. And I'm not really going over uh, the blue outline. On the pens, I'm going to go back and I'm just going to fill in the little postage stamps. I'm just doing the middle right now because what will happen is some of that ink will be picked up with this marker and it won't be as white. So anything I want to keep as white as possible, I'm doing that first. And then after I've filled in all the center of the stamps, I'm going to go through and go around the stamps. And I don't mind if it's not you know, as bright white. It's just subtle enough to kind of break up the blue on the envelope. Now for the tips of the pen, I'm bringing in um, Smoky Slate, my marker, and I'm just gonna add a little dab of color at the tip, and then that's it. After that, I can go ahead and cut these out. I'm going to do is I'm just going to fussy cut them. These surprisingly do not take that long to cut out because I have already done this step for a whole bunch of these but I wanted to show you how I did them and I just listen to a podcast or something nice while I'm doing stuff like this. Okay look my cute little envelope so I'm gonna go ahead and do that for all the other ones and I'll be right back okay so these are all cut and this took me 10 minutes to do 15 of these so not too bad next up I'm bringing back this stamp and I am going to use my Knight of Navy marker and I'm just going to outline the envelope I'm going to do this for 36 envelopes. I'm just gonna stamp that down. And then I'm gonna cut these out too. So um, it may seem like a tedious <laughs> amount of cutting, but it's really not. These are really actually quite simple to cut. Um, and it goes pretty quickly and it's so worth it. Gonna look so cute when it's done. All my envelopes are cut, all my mailboxes, and then I have all of these envelopes. Um, and I have more of these envelopes. I have some that say, you're the best ever. Um, let's see, this is so you've got something to celebrate. We have a bunch that say a note of thanks. And then I have some happy birthdays. Okay, so let's put these together. So I'm gonna hole in my card bases and I'm going to start by gluing on my um, post box. I'll do a few just so you, there's a few different patterns to show you here. I'm not putting it in the center, I'm just kind of 
putting it up and off to the right a little bit. Let's grab some different patterns here. Now I'm going to glue these little envelopes to my post box. Look how cute. Next, I'm going to bring in these envelopes and I'm going to pop them on using some Stampin' Dimensionals. I could probably get away with using two and I'm going to do a variety of sentiments here. I'm just going to tilt this on, a, on its side just a little bit, overlapping just like that. Okay, time to add a little bit of color that's not blue. So I'm bringing in my Sweet Sorbet, and in this set, there is the most adorable little heart that can be used with so many other stamp sets, and uh, I love it on the envelope here as well. So I'm going to stamp a little heart right there, and a little heart right there. these are coming together and regardless of the pattern paper on these cards the whole design and layout is looking so pretty cannot go wrong okay now last step I want to add some flowers so just to add a little pop right here Now that I have um, all of my cards put together, I'm going to take some rhinestone gems and put them on the mailbox. To finish the cards, I've decided I wanted to add some flowers and a pop of color. So I'm pulling in Sentimental Park and I'm going to use these two two-step stamps. I'm going to stamp the outline with Misty Moonlight and I'm going to use um, I am going to use our new yellow, I'm drawing a blank, Lemon Lolly to stamp the inside and then I'm going to cut them with the coordinating die. So using my Misty Moonlight, just stamping So I have all my die cuts done. Now I am just going to start gluing them to my card. So I'll just do a couple to show you how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to take the cluster of flowers and I'm going to tuck that just behind my envelope. And then that kind of fills in this space right here. I am now cutting a strip of Granny Apple Green cardstock and I'm bringing in my Petal Park Punch and I am going to punch two leaves per card. I'm going to bring in my card. Just simply tuck them behind the big flower. 
Okay, so I'm just gluing my leaves on, and I've decided the second leaf, I want it popped up a little bit. Okay, so my cards are actually almost finished, which is exciting. Um, some of them are done a little bit different, and you know, some of the flowers I have going off in this direction, some I have going off in this direction, so there's night, no right or wrong. I also didn't want to cover up the little bunny. I have another one where the little bunny is poking through behind the flowers right here. So cute! And then this one with um, the little fox. I didn't want to cover that little fox up with the flowers, so I bunched up the flowers down in the corner. So you can have a lot of fun with this design. So. The last thing I'm going to do to this card uh, to finish them is add a little bit of bling inside the center of the flowers. Now I could use my um, I could use my gems, but I have these metallics, and they are so much fun. So I'm going to show you a couple of these, and then I'm going to finish these and set them aside to dry on my um, my bigger table. But I'm going to go ahead and use my, let's see, I think, mm, so, well, first of all, there's copper, there's gold, and there's silver. So I have to decide which color I want to do, but I think what I, I will do is one of each so you can see what it looks like. So for this one, I'm going to do the gold. And I'm just going to squeeze a little bit and lift up and a little bit more in this one. Let me show you. Let me zoom in. You see that? So that's going to give me some dimension and it's going to look so cool when it's done. Let's do another one that, that's uh, also gold. So I'm just gently squeezing and lifting, like pulling up, like you would making a meringue pie. And then this one, I'm squeezing it out a little bit longer, I'm just kind of twisting it around. Okay, let's try a silver one. The copper, I think, really stands out. I'm go ahead and finish putting my copper metallic this is called in, metallic enamel effects basics so this is the copper you get all three I'll have the links down in the, the description below for you but yeah these are absolutely beautiful so let me pull in the other colors so you can see all three together here so you have the silver the gold and the copper so pretty so there are my finished cards. All I have to do is put some white cardstock inside to finish them, stamp my sentiment, and sign, seal, and deliver. So all said and done, uh, to make these 36 cards took me about two hours, give or take, but I was also designing on the fly kind of as I went too. So if you were to make some of these at home, um, just following along these steps, these are not... Um, cards that are really super time consuming. I know there's a little bit of fussy cutting and die cutting, but once you get that done, boom, it's just glue and adhere and away you go. So I really hope you enjoyed today's cards. I can't wait to try these with the Christmas designer series paper and some Christmas flowers. I think this is a great design and a fabulous stamp set that you can use for every occasion. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you're notified every time I upload a new video. Take care and happy stamping.